So if you've watched the other videos, you'll have a, a pretty good understanding of basic technique for your bunker shots. And for the most part, that's going to work well for you. Sometimes you'll get bunkers that have quite steep faces. So what I want to do is look at how you play, say, a shorter, higher shot, and then also what do you do about the shots that are often called the most difficult ones in golf, which is a 30 to 50 metre bunker shot. So first of all, if we have a look at the, the, sh the very short one, even this bunker here, it's got a fairly high lip on it. So I want to get the ball up fairly quickly. Now I probably could just take a standard bunker shot and it'll get out fine. But let's say the, the lip of the bunker is actually steeper. So first thing is I need to have plenty of loft on the club when the club moves through the sand underneath the ball. So two ways I can get more loft on the club. Well three, I can take a club with more loft in the first place. But the second two ways, first of all, if I aim the club face further to the right, that effectively increases the loft. So rather than aiming the club face at, at the target, I'm going to aim it right, which you should be doing anyway. It's going to make the club move more correctly through the sand. But I'm going to aim it even further right with this one. The second thing is that if I lower the grip of the club, lower the handle of the club, it also adds loft. So if I want the club to swing back and through and have the ball come out quite high, I want to have as much loft on the club as I can at impact and I'm going to set up a little bit differently in order to achieve that. So because I want the club face more open, my, that's going to influence the shot to go a little bit to the right of the target, so I'm going to aim a bit to the left. How much I allow is a little bit individualistic, so you'll have to practice it a bit to find out how much you need to aim to the left to allow for an open club face. But if you, as a rule of thumb for most of your standard shots, say I want the club face to be open 20 to 30 degrees, with this one I'm actually opening it about 40. And then from there holding the club lower. Now in order for my to swing back and through and keep the club lower, I'm actually going to widen my stance a little bit and then lower my hips. So keeping my balance when I'm playing this shot is going to be critical. Now because the shaft of the club is lower, that means that when the club swings back and through, it's actually going to swing back and through a little more shallow or a little flatter than what it would be if I stood up a little bit taller. So remember, when you're looking to get the ball up in the air, don't swing the club steeper. That's all only going to encourage a digging blow. You actually want the club to move more shallow through the sand. So, so my hips are low, my club is low, now I've got a lot of loft on the club, and when I swing the club back and through, all the same things that we talked about before, as the club's approaching the ball, the, the club is going to catch up and pass my hands, but even though I want the ball to get up in the air, I still need to catch it with a descending blow. So I'm setting up here, hands low, swing the club back and through, and the ball will get up in the air very quickly. It's going to land at a steeper angle, which will help it to stop faster. And also, if the ball struck correctly, like that one was, it's also going to have a lot of spin. So the, the amount of backspin comes from correctness of contact, not from anything else. Okay, let's have a look at the one that so many people think is the most difficult shot in golf. The 30 to 40 metre shot. The big difference between the short shots, where it feels like there's not that much arm motion, but the club is going to move quickly around my hands, just as it would if I'm holding it in my fingertips. And the longer shot is the longer shot I feel like there's actually less wrist action during the stroke, or less movement around my wrists, I should say, because we want to keep out manipulation. So when the club swings back and through, it feels more like my arms are doing the work rather than just my wrists, uh, rather than the club just moving around my wrists. I'll still, even with a longer shot, make sure that when I set up, the club face is open because again, that's going to help the club to move more correctly through the sand. So if I'm looking to hit the ball, say 30 metres, my setup is much the same, club face is still open, but my thought when I swing through is it's more, more of a, a wider arm action back and through. And again, I didn't need to hit that hard and that's traveled about 30 metres. I've also still caught the ball with a slight descending blow, exactly the same as I did with all the others. And you'll, and you'll note that I haven't taken a lot of sand. In fact, the difference between the sand that I took for that very first short high shot and the other one, I actually can't tell the difference. 
so it's much the same. So the big difference with the shorter, higher ones, I'm set up lower, and then the club is allowed to swing past my hands as I'm swinging through. With the other one, it's more arm swing rather than having a hand action. Practice both of those and you'll find that very quickly you'll start to become more comfortable with shots of all sorts of dif different distances. Have a play with using different wedges when you do this too because you'll find that you might have, because of the shape of the wedges that you have in your bag, you might find some will work more effectively than others. But practice those and you'll find that as your technique improves then your confidence in bunkers will improve as well.